So thus far in our data flow task, we've set up the OLADB source that extracts the quarter one 2004 sales data by product category, and we've done uh, a derived column transformation to multiply unit quantity by, um, or order quantity by unit price, and then we've aggregated the sales amount that was derived by product category ID. Our next step is to get the Excel source and add that in. And this is the Excel workbook that contains discount rates by category ID. So after adding this in, we'll go ahead and open up the editor. And in the editor, we can create a connection to that source. So we'll navigate to the path where the Excel workbook is found. Let's see. And here's our workbook, the category discount. And we have the Excel version. Notice that we have uh, from Excel 3.0 to Microsoft Excel 2007. And we flagged that the first row has column names. And we'll click OK. And we need to identify the sheet in the workbook that contains data. In this case, that would be sheet 1. And we can actually preview that data here. And we can see that we have category ID and the category name and the discount amounts. So we're going to take this data pull it into our pipeline and actually merge it with the source data that we grabbed from the SQL Server source. Now anytime you create a data source, you need to also go to columns so that it actually reads the data and prepares the output columns matching the external columns that it found in its source. In this case, we had three columns from our workbook. Okay, so we're done with this. Usually when you're working with Excel data, you will have to add a data conversion transformation to fix up some of the data to play well with other data sources in your data destinations. So I'll add this in next, and of course add that to the pipeline by connecting the source with the data conversion transformation. And what I'm going to do here is open up the transformation, and I need to convert the category ID into a 4-byte signed integer data type so that I can merge it with the source data that I've got from the SQL Server database. And as part of that process, I can also set up an alias. This will just give us a column name that matches, which makes it easier to join up data later. And here I can also set the data type as a 4-byte signed integer. And that's all I need to do there, so we'll click OK. The next step is to add a sort transformation. So I'll be using the merge transformation later to bring the two pipelines together. And before I can do that uh, in a merge transformation, that data must be sorted. So I'm going to add actually two sort transformations, one for the OLADB source pipeline. and one for the Excel pipeline. There we go. So it has given a unique name to each transformation. I'm just going to rearrange things here and connect the two sort transformations into the respective pipelines. And then I'm going to configure each of these to sort by product category ID. And notice there's a pass-through checkbox here, so the pipeline currently contains in my aggregate side just the product category, product category ID and sales, and it'll bring the sales through without any further sorting. 
default sort direction is ascending and I can have multiple sort columns and if I have uh, duplicate values here's my opportunity to check this box so that it removes any duplicates there but that's not our case here so I'll just click OK and I'll repeat that process over here for the data coming from Excel so I'll select, select product category ID as my sort and let everything else pass through and click OK now I'm ready to add in my merge join transformation so I'm actually going to merge this but also join it together so that I have my product category ID and sales information from the aggregate uh, aggregated data uh, data flow and join that with the respective discount amount by category ID so I'll click on the sort transformation and drag that in so if you're going to have a dependency on a left outer join or a right outer join you want to make sure that you select the left outer join um, and assign it to the proper output so here with the sort there's the sort output um, has been given a name and defaults here into the um, input output selection dialog box and I have to associate that with either the left input or, or the right input in my uh, merge join transformation so uh, in this case I want my left input to be the side coming from SQL Server I'll click OK and then I'll go to the second sort transformation and connect that into the merge join and it doesn't prompt me there because there's only one additional output or input remaining and so it automatically uh, makes that the right input for this merge join transformation now I'll go ahead and edit the transformation and you can see that it has figured out a join here and that's because I created that um, data type conversion to, uh, I named that column product category ID and so it was able to detect the matching names and created a join appropriately there I can always delete joins and do a drag and drop to create other joins if um, the join that it found was not not correct. You can see that the join type is an inner join and so only those matches that are found will be sent out of the output of the merge join transformation. You can also set up left outer joins and full outer joins. So we'll leave the inner join in place so our next step here is to choose which columns coming from each of the input data flow are going to be part of the output from this particular transformation so I'll choose product category ID and sales from the left side and I'll choose discount from the right side and so these will be the three columns that will be part of the new output from this merge join transformation Now I have one more step to do before I actually output all of this information out to a text file and that would be to do a derived column because my goal is to um, calculate the discounted sales so in my data flow at this point I have the category ID I have the sales amount and I have the discounted amount so I need to do a calculation to multiply the sales amount by the discount rate to come up with a discounted sales value so we'll add in the derived column transformation and then we'll edit this by adding in a new column this column name will be discount sales and that will be calculated by this expression we'll take sales and we're going to multiply oops, multiply sales and 
by the discount rate. But the discount rate we need to subtract from 1 in order to get the actual rate that we're going to multiply by. Because the discount rate, say, is a 15%, we actually want to then multiply sales by 85% uh, in order to get the discounted amount. So I click down below to validate the expression. It's turned black so that I know that it has validated correctly. So now I'm ready to add in the destination to output this data flow to a flat file. And connect that into the data flow. And double click on this to open the editor. And I need to create a file through a connection manager. This will be a delimited file, so I'll click OK here, but you can see the other options, fixed width and uh, flag ragged right. So I could give this a name. I can select a location, so this is where I want this to go, and I'm going to name this file the Discounted Sales. And I'll save it as a text file, but you can also save it as a CSV file or other file type if you choose. But we'll take the text file. And so that file doesn't exist yet, but will be created when we execute this package. You have various options here to set the formatting and text qualifiers, and if you're going to include a delimiter for the header row, and if you want to include column names in the first data row, which I will do in this case. You also have other pages in this editor. If you need to um, change row delimiters or column delimiters, you would do that on the columns page. And you can see the columns that will be created here. And then if you need to do further manipulation to the column settings, you actually can access column delimiters on a column by column basis. And you can also change the data type and indicate whether that column has been uh, included with a text qualifier. And if you've got data in the pipeline, you could uh, actually do a preview here as well. So we'll click OK. And before we wrap this up, we need to do a mappings. And so this is the reverse process of what we saw with the um, data source, where we take our data source external columns and um, associate those with the data flow columns. Here, we're taking the data flow columns from the input and mapping those to destination columns. So if there were some destination column, for example, here that didn't match name for name with input column, we would be able to um, make corrections here to associate columns as we need to or to just simply ignore a column if there was something that we did not want to um, have pass through out to the destination. We have this ignore option here as well. But in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to take the sales amount and we're going to um, exclude the discount amount. So we'll go ahead and set ignore here. So we'll just get the product category ID, the sales, and the discount sales. And click OK. And then we're ready to execute the package. And just like we saw in the control flow demonstration, we get the color coding as the package executes, which does so rather quickly here. But as, um, as an item was waiting to execute, it was turned to yellow. And as it completes successfully, it turns to green. The difference between the control flow and the data flow is that we actually see the row counts as we progress from the source to each subsequent transformation. So we can see whether or not we're losing rows along the way. Now, of course, we lost a lot of rows when we left the aggregate function here because 19,563 rows went in, but we expected that 
uh, to consolidate grouping by however many um, category IDs that we have, which in this case was four. So we get four rows out of that transformation, which is good. That's the four rows that we have coming from our Excel source. And then uh, ultimately those four rows from each of those pipelines will join together in the merge join transformation. We do some calculations in the final derived column and then four rows ultimately get um, input into our flat file destination. And then we can um, navigate to that location to check out the end results in that file. So let's switch over to the folder where that was added. And so here's the discounted sales that was just created. And we can open this up and view the results. So here we see the header row, product category ID, sales discount and discount sales, comma delimited here. And then we have the individual category IDs as well as the grand total sales as well as the discounted sales. Because we excluded discount, that column is there, but you can see that there's two columns, two commas here to indicate the missing column. So there you see how we create a data flow task to manipulate data from that originated from two different data sources and we can perform calculations on it, we can perform aggregations and sort transformations on it, join that data together and then output it to a single destination.